G'day and welcome, my name is Matthew. In this video tutorial for Ruida's RD Works, we're going to have a look at the laser cutting parameters. I'm going to show you how to assign the different parameters to different layers on the job and also organize those into the order that you want to process them on your CO2 laser machine. I'll also have a look at the laser parameter library and how to use this tool to create your own library of your favorite cut settings for different types of materials that you can apply to future jobs that you want to process on your laser machine. So I'll show you where to set the laser parameters and how to order those and also how to uh, create your own library for different materials and assign those to future laser cutting jobs. So here I am in RD Works version 8 and I just want to say up front that I will not be providing cutting parameters in this video for different types of materials. The settings that I'm using to demonstrate are what I would commonly use say on 3mm ply board or MDF on my 90 watt laser. In future videos I aim to demonstrate a few methods that I use to determine the best cutting parameters for various materials that you might use. So what we'll do here is we'll import some shapes that we're going to use for this demonstration and we have here some sample text with some circles and also two outside lines. And we might want to engrave the text, we might want to draw the lines, and we might want to do something with this inside border and then cut the final outside border. So to do that we need to separate these uh, objects into separate layers. So first of all I'll start with the text. I'll select the text and using the colour palette down the bottom left of the screen I'll change that one to blue. Next I'll select the circles and we'll change that to the red layer. And then I'll select this inside line here and we'll change that to green layer. So now you can see over on the right hand side at the top we have these four separate layers. We have the black, green, the red and the blue. So now we've got our four layers built up. Now we want to do is edit the layer parameters. So under the work tab on the right hand side we can double click on one of the layers and it'll open up the layer parameter tab. First thing it will show you is the layer color and then is output. That is either yes or no and that is if you want to send that layer to the laser machine or not. And this is good if you've got multiple parts on a work plan and you just want to cut certain parts, you may have them set as a different color layer and you can turn them on and off whether you wanted them cut or engraved etc. Underneath that we have the speed that we're going to be cutting at and in this case I'm using an example of 3mm ply board. So we're using 15 millimeters on this laser machine and the repeat number is how many times you want it to repeat that cut. So if you have thicker material you may need to increase the number of times it cuts. So you would tick the box behind here and you might increase that to 2 or to 3. If you untick this box it grays out the repeat number and then it's invalid for that uh, layer parameter for that uh, layer. The processing mode we've set to cut, so that is going to be a uh, vector cut. And we have the other options which were scan, cut, dot and pen. And in this video we're just looking at the scan, cut and dot. So we'll leave this layer on cut and the if blowing is yes or no. Uh, when we're cutting we have the air assist on. If we're engraving we might like to set it off to no, but if you don't have automatic air assist on your machine with a solenoid to control the air on and off, then selecting any of the yes or no won't affect the air on for your machine. Uh, if you do have the air assist, you can select yes or no. Now the minimum and maximum power we set for the cut, and this is obviously dependent upon the machine that you're using. And if you have a single glass laser tube in your machine, you just have number one ticked. If you have a dual machine with two laser tubes, you can select which tube you're using and you just tick this box on or off. Just a little thing to note, if you are um, trying to change the minimum power, it won't change higher than the maximum power. For example, if I tried to go to 55 here and then moved across, it would only go up to the max power that was already set. So if you needed 55% power, you would have to change the max power first, and then you'd be able to change this to 55 as well. So once you've finished changing the layer parameter for the black layer, you can click OK, and you could double click over here and select the next layer, or over on the left hand side of the layer parameter tab, we can select the blue layer.
This is going to be our scan layer and we're going to output that. Yes, the speed that we're outputting it. Again, if we want to repeat the engraving to make it darker or deeper, we could repeat the number here and the processing mode we've set to scan. Because I have ultimate air assist, I'm selecting if blowing, no. So no air on while it's engraving. And we've got our minimum and maximum power there for our laser tube for the engraving. And we select the scan mode, X swing. And there are four options there for scanning and that's X unilateral, X swing, the Y unilateral and the Y swing. And I'll show you the differences of those now. So what we'll do is we'll turn off all the outputs to the other layers so that we can do an example for this X swing. So if we do a preview on this here and do a simulation, you can see that uh, the laser is going left and right with its engraving. So each line is engraved left to right. If we change this now to X unilateral, then we will see that the laser machine will just engrave just in the one direction. So it will go one way, go back to its starting side and then repeat that line. So this is a much slower way of engraving. And then the Y swing and Y unilateral, just use the Y axis instead of the X axis. And I'll show an example with Y swing. And you can see here that when we do the simulation, it's going up and down with its engraving. So one other option that I want to show you as part of laser scan is this one here called independent output. So what we'll do is um, we'll do a, a preview of that. And you can see here that independent output changes. It, so it scans each individual shape separately rather than all at once. So if we compare that to the way that we had it previously with independent output unticked, instead of scanning each individual letter, it will do all the letters all at once, which is a much faster way to set your engraving. So for this layer, we're going to leave it set on X swing and underneath that we can see the interval and we'll have the interval set uh, at 0 0.1. This is the interval between each line of the engraving. So we can see we've got here 0.1 millimeters. I'll just show you the difference between uh, the line intervals. So we say OK and we'll do a quick preview on just the text itself. We can see that uh, the resulted engraving looks like it's a solid shape. If we zoom all the way in, we will see that each one of these individual lines is approximately 0.1 uh, millimeters apart. Now let's compare that to say increasing the interval down here. Let's increase it to 0.7 and say OK. We'll do a preview and we can see that each of these lines are now 0.7 millimeters apart, which also make the stars more undefinable. So it's a less quality engraving. We'll now select the red layer and if we have a look here is output yes. Uh, we're running at uh, 15 millimeters a second but because we just want to draw these red lines on the timber and not cut all the way through I'm going to increase that, uh, that speed up to 150 and we're going to leave it on cut because it is a, like a vector cut line and we're going to leave the air assist on but we will reduce the power down to about 25%. The last one is the green layer and we're going to output that at a speed of 15 millimeters a second. We're going to cut all the way through the timber so this is the same uh, settings as the black uh, layer uh, but we have the processing mode as dot. So what the dot processing mode does is it takes this solid vector line here, the green layer that we have, and we can make it into a dashed or a dotted line. We have over here on this side interval, so we can have the gap between each line and we'll make it in this example two millimeters, but we might want the actual cut or the dot length to be four millimeters. Now what we need to do is uh, say yes, that we want that output and we say okay, and let's do a preview. Before we do a preview, I can see here that I forgot to put the output on this engraving layer to yes, so I can double click on that and change it to yes. So we're going to do a preview, just pay attention to the layer order. We can see here that we've got our black, blue, red and green and it will process the work in that order. Now that can be an issue as you can see here, it's cutting the outside layer first. If this was cutting out of material and that material then fell down into the machine, then it wouldn't finish the rest of the job properly. It would be out of focus or fallen completely into the machine if you're using blades. 
You can see there also the green layer is the perforated dot line. We just get a four millimeter cut with a two millimeter gap. Now that could be quite handy if you're doing perforations on cardboard or paper as a perforation or a fold line. Now what we want to do is change the order of the layers so that they cut the way that we want them to. And you can see here that each layer has a priority underneath it and it's in the order of one to whatever however many layers you have. So if we want this black layer last we can click and drag it down and this can be a little bit fiddly if you've got a lot of different uh, layers so you can also do it by number. So say we want to do the perforation layer first we can double click on this priority here and enter the number one and you can see it's moved that green layer to the top. So now if we do a preview it will do the green layer first followed by the engraving then the circles and then the final cut. So if we do the preview now, we can see that it will do the perforation cut first. That's our green layer, followed by our engraving layer, which was our blue layer, then our red layer, and finally the outside cut, which was our black layer. Now the other option that we have here next to hide and output, let's have a look at some of those. So if we say to the red layer hide, we'll notice that the circles will disappear from the workpiece. But because the output is still set to yes, when we run the job, those circles will still be cut. If we were to say output no, and we now do a preview, we'll see that the circles are not cut. So even if they are not hidden and shown on the screen, if the output is set to no, then they won't cut. So normally we'll have these all output set to yes, and in some cases you may want to redo a work area so if these circles weren't drawn dark enough and you wanted to go over it again you hadn't moved the workpiece that's an important uh, note that if the workpiece is moved you can't redo the same workpiece and we might want to just output those red circles again to the laser so we could select output off for the rest and say all these to no and now when we do a preview it would just redraw those red circles so let's have a look at the laser parameter library. Let's uh, say, for example, we're happy with this outside cut line that we had and you've tested it and you want to use this setting again rather than try to remember it and writing it down on a notepad that you lose. What you can do is you can go into the laser parameter and we've selected the black layer. We click on the parameter library up above. Normally this would come up blank, but these ones here are, pre, are ones that I've done previously. So let's save a new uh, parameter. So the ones we're going to be saving is this one that is shown here. And let's go save as, and let's call this one uh, MDF. Three millimeter being our size or thickness of our material. So we're going to say it's a cut and which machine we're using it on. In this case, it was a 90 watt machine and say OK and you'll see that it appears here in our parameters library. Now if we exit that, that uh, parameter will be there um, to use again. So as an example we'll create a new file and we have our black layer here but let's just for example let's change that to blue um, which was an engraving layer previously. So what we can do is go into our parameter library and we can go load the new uh, cut that we have so let's go into the MDF cut 90 watt and say load now what that will do is we'll change all these settings to these settings that have been saved in our parameter library and you can see that there let's say for example that we found that we wanted to change the speed to say 20 millimeters a second and we wanted to save this new parameter as our MDF uh, parameter what we would do is go into the parameter library and we can see here that says MDF is still at 15. What we could do is go save as and we'd have to name it exactly the same as the previous parameter. So in this case it's MDF 3mm cut 90 watt. And now if we press save we can see that it will do we want to duplicate it or cover it. So we can say yes we want to cover it or override it. So we can see when we go back in that we have that file there and the speed is now changed to the new setting. If there's a parameter in our library that we no longer want, we can then click on that one and press delete.
So thanks for watching. I hope that video helped you get started with RDWorks and setting layers, the parameters and using the parameter library. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos in the future. And until next time, take care. Cheers.